Reef DVM's coming at you here with our pasture fencing video where we use some Antilly rope um, and some solar fencer um, power. Um, some of this video you may have already seen, just a little clip of it here or there. This is when I was starting to load those, um, uh, you know, eight foot, uh, six inch diameter posts up. And then we took them out in the field and we set them all out in the field. It was a really good project. Um, the first part of this project obviously was putting in the wood corners and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. These big AC2 uh, treated posts are quite heavy um, and uh, this is a hard clay pack soil. So I had just put out the video previous on how we put them in the ground with this um, 320D and this rented hammer. It was fantastic, but uh, I'll put the link here at the top and you're certainly welcome to see the previous video on how well the hammer worked and our thoughts on it. Still definitely a, a good tool and a tool that I'd highly recommend for doing a project like this. Um, but anyways, back to the pastures. We decided that um, we kind of follow the University of Minnesota's Extension Office um, recommendations and we're setting this up as um, three pastures so we can kind of rotate through. Uh, kids are getting to the age here where they would like a horse and we'd like to maybe segregate off a few cows and different things. So um, we're going to take some of our... Um, grazing land that's just kind of been open at this point and fence it off and get it up and running. So um, this is virgin land that has not been fenced um, and it's it's a pretty heavy clay soil so it's got a pretty good vegetation on it. Um, we have planted some grasses on a couple of the fields already so that was a help. And what we decided to do is we get the couple uh, farm families to help out and work together as a team. So we basically fenced off a couple farms at the same time and Doing it um, as a team just made it a lot easier for everybody. So as you can see, the guys here are helping install the braces and the tension wire. You get four guys on a corner, and literally a corner is done in like 10 to 15 minutes. Um, it's fantastic. You know, we got the gator there with all the supplies. We got two guys working on tension wires. Got the other two guys helping us with the end bracing. Um, end bracing for us is pretty crucial out here in this part of the country. A lot of people like to do H-bracing. Um, H-bracing does work well, do not get me wrong, especially if you're doing a high tensile wire where you're going to be putting a lot of top stress on the posts with the wire. But um, in this situation, we're using Intelli rope, which really doesn't put a lot of stress on the top of the post other than when you get you know, ice and snow on it. And the other problem that we have is that a lot of times our center posts want to get pushed out by the frost even if we put them in four and a half five feet deep so by anchoring the end uh, the brace posts in an end fashion it really makes it hard for them to lift up because they're pulling on the bases of the other two posts and we found that to be just ideal for keeping that center post in the ground again you can always add the H brace top piece if you're doing high tensile and you're putting a lot of pull but we're not doing that so this is basically a team effort. Um, it took us about three and a half hours uh, the day before to drive in all the wood posts. And then it took us about two hours to do all the corners um, with a team of four guys uh, on each farm. And that was just fantastic. And each corner is made up of two braces and then three posts. And then, of course, it's it's got a tension band wire in there that's been um, twisted tight, uh, which gives it its strength, obviously, on the opposite cross. Then once we got done with this, it was kind of, you know, heading towards the design and the wire and where the gates would be. And that was really kind of the fun part of the project, kind of planning it out. We did a lot of planning in our head, but when it came to the actual, you know, day of stepping it off by feet, pulling out the tape measure, um, certainly was quite enjoyable. It's, it's, it's part of farming that I, I really don't mind, especially since we're not using barb anymore. Um, as far as the, the look of it, uh, we banged in about 250 T-posts in two days. Um, again, like I said, it took us just a few hours to do the corner wire ups. And then, of course, it took us three and a half hours to bang the posts in. We bought ourselves a um, uh, Parmac uh, fencer, um, uh, 30 miles. I'm not going to be doing quite that distance. Um, but the Solar Pack 12 here um, should obviously handle what we'd like. I like to overbuy my fencers as far as mileage because that way they hold up better um, when you get you know a week's worth of clouds and so forth. So this has been a good fencer for us um, right out of the box. Believe it or not, it does have power. It does recommend letting it sit in the sun though for five days. So we'll certainly do that. I bought myself a set of three grounding rods. 
I went with the power fields. Uh, these are more of a galvanated type rod, but the kit comes with everything, which is kind of nice. It makes it more affordable. And certainly with the cost of copper being up, um, you know, the typical housing grounding rods are pretty pricey. Um, I also bought another rod uh, for the lightning arrester, um, and we installed that. I I've had good luck with these. Um, they've saved my units a few times. Um, out here we get some pretty nasty June and July storms, so it was a good thing to install. I I'd recommend putting one of those up. As far as insulators and clamps go and stuff, I decided to go with the T-Post Claw insulators because my neighbor has had such good luck with these things. I mean, they've really held up well. They haven't degraded in the sunlight. They've taken a lot of physical stress when the uh, animals have bumped the wire, particularly the deer and stuff that come running through. They've got these really nice pulleys for the poly wire. And certainly, you know, at the, the handles and, you know, the ground connectors, which all come with clamps and ropes on them, I, I just... I love that. It's just, it's fantastic. Um, that the whole power field setup seemed to work really well for my neighbors, so I kind of jumped on the bandwagon, and this time I'm doing that. Uh, Zabras or whatever, they work fine too. These things even come, you know, with the uh, drill chucks and everything you can get. It's really nice. And then to put up the wire, I just kind of modified a 2x8 here with a couple big spikes on it. I did this kind of homemade jig and stuck it on the back of the John Deere Gator. Um, so that we could run all three wire at once. I mean, this saved us hours of time. Each IntelliRope PE6 is 660 feet long, so starting out with three at an attachment point, running the distance, clamping them together, and going with another three is absolutely fantastic. Since this is a kind of 10 to 15 year type of rope, and it's white and black, it works really good out here in the winter. We get a lot of white days where everything looks white, that little bit of black just just helps the animals see that wire. Even though I know the animals that are inside already know and respect the wire, I'm particularly talking about the small bears, the deer that are in our area, and some of the other wildlife that comes through, including occasional stray dog or two. As you can see, you just drive off with the gator and it just lays that rope right out, and then it's just a matter of clipping it into those, um, you know, T-post claws that Powerfield makes. It actually went really fast. Um, it's amazing how fast you can put out, you know, 8,000 feet of wire. <laughs> it's it's fantastic. Now, this wire has six strands in it, um, which is excellent. So remember when you're doing your calculation on your fencer that, let's say, you put out, um, you know, uh, 1,000 feet of this wire. Remember, though, that it's got six strands, so you get a time set by six. You really got 6,000 feet of wire that you're transversing. Went out and got ourselves some gates. Um, I chose to go with um, the one and three quarter cattle gates. I didn't go with the bull gates. Um, I have all my gates protected by hot wires, and I've got them with the sure latch, which is just a fantastic latch, which keeps the animals from rubbing on these gates. To me, there's nothing better than a sure latch gate. Um, even your kids can operate it, and it pushes shut, it locks in. Um, and then, of course, it's got the chain feature and the padlock feature, so if you want to make it so that nobody else can open it. You certainly can. I just like these latches. I've had them on the farm before and they've held up for years and years and years and given us just no problems. Um, as far as the fencer goes, got it up and running here. Um, I've got it on, you know, literally eight and a half, you know, miles of wire. And, you know, it's putting out an easy uh, 7,000 volts, um, you know, after five days of charge up, which is fantastic. You know, if I'd probably gone with an electro braid, which is more of a copper wire, it'd probably be putting out 10. Um, but IntelliRope was in my price range. As you can see, it looks great. I've got three wires up. I've got an alleyway, which leads to the water and to the feeder. I'll be adding a lean barn here soon. I've got three different um, paddocks set up here. I'll show you the one off to the side. It's the largest one here. And it's really going to work great, I think, for rotational grazing, just to take the stress off the field. Um, and also allow us, obviously, to work on the fields and help the fields out when there aren't animals in them. All said and done, you know, eight and a half miles, seven days worth of work, 250 T posts, 700 insulators, 45 wood posts, rented a hammer, and two farm families got this done on two different farms. It was fantastic, folks. We appreciate you watching. Please like or subscribe and follow the progress we make on the farm. Thank you.